Hi chemists, welcome back. This unit is all about solutions, and acids and bases form specific types of solutions that are really special to chemistry. So the purpose of this video is to talk all about the properties of acids and bases. At the end of this video, you should be able to define an acid and a base according to the Arrhenius definition, review the correct way to write the names and formulas for acids and bases, and describe and list the properties that pertain to acids and bases. The good news is, is that some of this information will be review. There are three different types of definitions for acids and bases, but for our purposes in this class, we will only work with one. The name of that is Arrhenius. An Arrhenius acid is defined as an ionic compound that has H plus as the cation. Acids typically have a sour taste. For example, citric acid. Acids will often cause indicators to change colors. Indicators are substances that will change color based on the pH of a solution. And we'll talk more about pH a little bit later on in this unit. Acids will turn litmus paper pink or red. The pH of acids is less than seven. Acids will react with metals in a single replacement reaction called corrosion. Acids will react with bases in a double replacement reaction called neutralization. Now we're on to bases. An Arrhenius base is an ionic compound that has OH minus or the hydroxide ion as its anion. Bases have a bitter taste. Bases are often slippery. For example, soap is an example of a base. And bases will cause indicators to change colors. Bases will change litmus paper blue, and the pH of bases is greater than seven. Bases will also react with acids in, again, a neutralization reaction. To write the name and formula for bases is very simple. They follow the same rules of writing ionic compounds. So what you're going to do is use the typical rules for naming ionic compounds. So for example, if you were to look at this, you would just read whatever you see first and whatever you see second. So for example, we see sodium, so we would write sodium. And the OH, if you look on your polyatomic ion sheet, is called hydroxide. So this is called sodium hydroxide. Next up, the first thing we see is magnesium. And the second thing we see is hydroxide. So this is called magnesium hydroxide. And then the opposite now, I give you the name and you have to give the formula. So since this is an ionic compound, you do need to look up those charges and make sure that they add up to zero. So in this case, aluminum has a plus three charge, hydroxide is minus one. So that means that it should be ALOH3, just like that. Let's do the same thing with acids. So remember, there were three rules that we discussed early on in the year. If the anion of the acid, right, by anion I mean the, the negative thing, not the hydrogen, the negative thing. If the anion ends in ide, then we said it would be hydroblanchic acid. If the anion ends in eight, then we said it would be blankic acid. And then if it ends in it, then we've said it would be blank us acid. So again, for acids, you really want to focus on the anion. So for example, if you look at H3PO3, you're not focused so much on the hydrogen. I mean, you know that it's going to be an acid because it contains hydrogen as the cation, but you really want to focus in order to name this on the anion. So PO3 is called phosphite with the ending ITE. And remember, we said you could remember it changes to us by remembering something like 
bronchite us or gingivite us, right? So any kind of itis, right? So we would say that in this case, this should be phosphor us acid, right? It changes to us. Here's another one. Br is called bromide. Remember, ide changes to hydroblanchic acid. So this would be hydrobromic acid. And you just do the best that you can with the spelling. And then if we were to do the opposite now, where I give you the name and you have to give me the formula, remember hydrogen is always going to be the cation. So, and then you focus on the fact that it's ic, right? So since it's ic here, right, remember eight something icky. So ic must have been eight. So what we're really looking for is carbonate on the polyatomic ion sheet. And so if you look that up, you'll see that it's H with a plus one and then CO3 with a minus two. That's carbonate. So it's going to be H2CO3. So remember, whenever you're writing the formulas for acids, H plus one is always going to be the cation. Okay, so that was a little bit of a review. Make sure you ask some questions and of course, practice your skills. Thanks so much for watching.